Hey guys, and welcome to this week's Q&A for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. And as you can see, I'm sitting in a hostel. So that's the cool thing about DaVinci Resolve on our iPad. We can sit on any every spot and just keep working. So let's jump into the questions from this week. It's six questions. And the first one is more an awareness. So this guy was telling me that he's working on the M2 Pro 16 gigabyte uh, iPad with the, I guess the one or two terabyte version. And he has issues when he's working with 4K files. So he gets, he gets overheating problems. The screen is dimming down. So I was asking him, because I was curious, are you having those issues when you plug in your iPad and you're charging it? Because normally sometimes your devices can heat up while you're charging and using it at the same time. But he says it's even worse when he's charging, of course, but also the screen is keeping dimming down and everything. I don't really have an answer to that one. It's more an awareness to everyone from us. You guys, do you have overheating issues with 4K material? So now the next question would be, for example, okay, what kind of 4K? Do you have it with any kind of 4K or is it a sp specific file that uh, the M2 is having problems. So I have the M1 and all of the files that I work with, I not I don't really had any overheating issues. I rather had the problem that my battery was draining faster when I, for example, work from my SSD drive with my uh, USB-C hub and all of those kind of things. But I didn't have the issue that my iPad was completely shutting down, basically shutting down because of overheating issues. What I sometimes had, but this is really random, it's not part of editing, is I have the issue that sometimes my screen dims down for whatever reason and then comes back on. But it wasn't an overheating issue. Or maybe I never really considered it as an overheating heating issue could be I'm not really sure but it's so rare and I'm working on the iPad like so often it could be that the M2 maybe only gets more power because of they put more power through it I don't really know so this is why I give you this or I bring awareness to this issue because maybe some people can tell me if I would have this problem on your end I would figure out if on a different iPad I get the same problem maybe you have a bad device maybe something is wrong with that so for now I can't really tell if that is an iPad issue like do you have the same problems on any other iPad as well we don't, it could be right no don't get me wrong we definitely can uh, if, you, if you work on timelines and color correction stuff like that on 4k material I'm, i don't want to say that maybe my m1 would also went to the knees but because most of the times I just work in a full HD, I don't even work with 4K most of the times because of those YouTube videos, that's more than enough to work in 4K. I rather would know from you guys in the community, do you have the same issues? If you work on heavy loaded projects with 4K material, do you have overheating issues like this guy is saying? Okay, next question. Anyone knows how to change the video proxy settings? I had over 880 gigabytes of proxy stored on my iPad for a simple music video. Would like to change the default proxy location next to the video clips as well. Um I think you're talking about something different, not really proxies, because the problem with proxies right now is that on the iPad, we still cannot even create proxies. So you probably are talking about the render cache files. And yes, you can change the render cache files. And I have a complete workflow in my masterclass where I show you everything, how to set it up on a different location. And I think even one of my videos here, I already explained it in the Q&A series. So, but if you really talk about proxies, the way proxies work at the moment is you can't create proxies on the iPad. But if you started your project on DaVinci Resolve on the desktop and you created proxies and you bring all of your proxies with you to the iPad, you can actually work with them. And it's as simple as bringing all of the proxy files to your SSD next to your main files if you would like to. I would always put them in a folder or something and then come here into the media page and just, just select the proxy files there and it would start working. Hi Daniel, great video. How can we apply this filter to several similar clips on the t on in one time. He was basically talking about this video here, how to clean up the skin in DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. And what I used here is a note and an effect in the color page. So what you're talking about is actually just copying color corrections from one file to another file. Let's say for example, here I have a color correction, right? And let's say on that clip, I don't have it. How can I do this? The simplest way is now, if I selected this clip, I can just simply right click here and say, apply grade. Now I have the grade from that one applied to here. And there are many more ways how you can copy. I think I have a video here on my channel where I explain you how how to copy color grades from one file to another, even to a couple of multiple files. So there's there's many ways how you can copy that. No beautiful intros, no outros, straight to the matter, love this. Thank you so much, Darius. I put this in here in the Q&A videos because most of my videos are designed exactly like that because I jump, I scan myself lots of YouTube videos. But the reason why I show you this also is number one, of course, appreciation, thank you so much. But the second one is, I don't think that this is the best strategy for YouTube nowadays. Not saying that you should 
have intros that are boring, but I think maybe if I put more entertainment in my videos, if I make them a little bit longer, if it's just more, just longer for YouTube, because I think at the moment the problem is that 40 second videos, why should YouTube uh, share that? over a video that is, let's say, 10 minutes, still watchable. Like, I'm not talking about garbage. YouTube is not promoting garbage, but if I would create a 10 minute video that is super entertaining, funny, and also educational, right? The, the way that big YouTubers are making their videos, my videos would definitely get more traction. And I know that too. But those kind of, this also a test now. I created now over half a year, every day, those short videos, one in German and one in English. And I don't even have the time to create longer, not alone, maybe if I, one time in the future have a team and people and editors and whatever but at the moment i still do all of the, these kind of videos myself so i don't have the time to do the long forms i have the logitech keyboard too god thank you so much i thought i was going insane so he's talking about an issue with the spacebar if you have da vinci open and you have an external keyboard you bought some or whatever maybe even with a magic keyboard you have the problem that the spacebar is not working how it's supposed to be you cannot start and stop your playhead then it could be a setting in your ios it's not da vinci it's in the iOS and I figured that out here in this video but the credit goes to one of our people in the community I think I said the name in the video I forgot but basically he gave me the video how he solved that and I made a video about this and so we could help everyone so if you have the same issue look into this video hey bro I have a problem when I'm syncing my clips in DaVinci told me how to sync failed to match was found with attempting to align these clips I tried a lot of ways and I watched a lot of videos but no one fixes this problem please can you help me so he commented under the video with the multicam but you also have this feature so for example if I'm here in the edit page and I mark my cl two clips so for example in this case now this is a screen recording and also my main camera and if I do a right click I can say here auto align clips based on waveform most of the time I would say five ninety five percent it works straight like this but sometimes I get an error message so sometimes it depends I just have to readjust the clips like just if you take this a little bit and change the position, it works. But let's say for whatever reason, you have a very long audio file and something is wrong. I mean, of course, number one, you have to always figure out that is both actually, like, is it actually the same clip, right? It could be that it is the wrong clip. Let's assume it is the same from the same take and it somehow doesn't work. One way you can do it is definitely look into the parts that have the same in it. So let's say, for example, I know that the beginning here, they have the same in it. I could make a cut and just delete the rest. And so now I work actually with a smaller part. So the outer line mechanism is not has to analyze the whole clip. It only has to analyze the beginning. So if I now select this one and do right click and I say audio align with clips and based on waveforms, and then it actually recognizes everything and now you can just extend the clips again to the maximum. Boom, you're done as well. I hope you found this helpful and if you have any questions about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, just leave me a comment and I will answer them in the next episode of this series and probably make a video tomorrow as well. So I'm Daniel, see you in the next video and bye.